Well, good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. If you're watching us every week, chances are it's because you want to be an informed voter. And informed voters know they need strong journalistic sources to help keep them informed, keep them up to speed, and hold the people who want to wield political power to account. So let's get an update on the state of local journalism with our guest, Northeastern University journalism professor Dan Kennedy, co-host with Ellen Clegg of the weekly podcast, What Works? The Future of local news. Find out where to download it at whatworks.news. Dan, welcome. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Jim. All right. Appreciate it. So early next month, the Gannett newspapers will close down the print editions of 19 weeklies in eastern Massachusetts. Nine others are being merged into, I believe, four. Uh, included in this carnage, the Newton tab, uh, where I got my start in print back in 1988. And you also reported staff reporters at nearly all of Gannett's Massachusetts weeklies are being assigned to regional beats, which you wrote, quote, pulls them off bread and butter coverage of local government and community events, end quote. What's the significance of all this? Well, I think it's pretty significant because uh, Gannett weeklies are the way that many, many communities in eastern Massachusetts get their local news. Now, I think that their decision to move away from an emphasis on print and say, please subscribe on digital, that would be a perfectly fine thing to do, except that they had already hollowed out these papers for the most part. So already these were pretty much what you would call ghost newspapers with very little local news in them as you mentioned uh... most of the local reporters are being assigned to regional beats uh... so actually the end of print in a lot of these communities is really the least of it so uh, at the at the grassroots level what does that mean to these communities i guess no more uh, uh, no more meeting coverage, no more localized political reporting? Well, what I will say is that after this happened, I started putting out the call for tell me about independent sources of local news in your community. And I was astonished at how much is actually out there. I knew about a lot of it, but there's more than I even thought. So I do think that local news is alive and well in Massachusetts. If people would like to look at what might be in their own community, uh, go back to our whatworks.news website and look in the upper right corner at Mass Indie News. You might be surprised at what you find, but you're not going to be getting it from Gannett. Well, you mentioned there are alternatives to uh, what these big chains are doing to local community journalism. And there's one that I'm familiar with, the Provincetown Independent, which is one of two newspapers serving that part of the Cape. Uh, just briefly, because we have to then take our break, tell me a little bit about uh, how their business model and why you think it's so promising. Uh, well, Ed Miller, the co-founder and editor of the Provincetown Independent, is our guest this week on the podcast. Okay. But they had this really interesting hybrid. It's a hybrid of print and digital. Uh, they still are able to attract local advertising. And it's a hybrid of for-profit and non-profit. It's a for-profit paper, but they have a non-profit arm that pays for certain types of accountability journalism in the community. It's a really promising setup. They hope to get up to 20 reporters in a few years, and uh, we're really hoping for the best from them. Well, I read that paper on a regular basis. They do a great job of covering a few key local issues like housing, development, the environment, and so forth. I guess that's the wave of the future. It is. I should point out, for in the interest of disclosure, that I'm an informal advisor to the Independent. Uh, but, yeah, they do terrific work. Would he get about 100 k a year for that? Oh, yeah, well, not quite that. Okay. All right. Just a little less. Uh, 